Welcome back, gang, to our first hands-on configuration networking video. Thanks for stopping by. What we're going to do today is build our first SSID configuration. So the tools that I have in front of me here are an Ethernet switch, PoE enabled, of course. I've got my access point. I've got a couple of cables to get the whole thing connected, and then my laptop to do the configuration. Now, the only thing that I did before you guys got here was plugged in the Ethernet switch and let it boot up. So I've got this powered up and hopefully the fan noise isn't so much that it drowns out my voice. The first thing that we need to do is connect our access point to a PoE enabled switch, power over Ethernet. See I've got port 24 uh, connected here and as I, actually that might be port 23 but it doesn't really matter. So what I'm going to do is connect this to the Ethernet port and you can see that this guy went blue to begin with and as it boots up it'll change to green. It's always good to get a handle on what your um, LED indicators are doing rather than just green is good, not green is bad. And you can probably see that, or hopefully you can see, that this Ethernet port is eventually coming up. Now I've decided to work with the 5 gigahertz side today so I'm going to take my two antennas and get them going. Now one thing I didn't mention before is that usually one of your antennas is listed as the primary. So if you're only going to install one antenna, put it on the primary. But I'm going to go ahead and use two. And there we have it. But this AP doesn't do anything until I configure it. Remember that this guy is a fat AP and so it needs a configuration. So in order to do that, I'm going to take my console cable run it into the console port Woo. now my laptop doesn't have a serial port so I'm going to take a USB to serial adapter and use that to go into my USB port for the configuration okay well that's it we're all wired all that remains now is to do the configuration, and I'll be right back with that. All right, here we go, guys. We're going to set up our access point via PuTTY. So PuTTY is our terminal emulator. But when I go to select serial, I don't know what port I'm supposed to be using because we're connected via USB. So here's a handy trick when you're going to do that. I'm just going to go to my computer properties and take a look at my port settings. So device manager. I know it's taking a sweet time so I'm going to go down here to ports take a look and I can see that I'm using COM11 for my USB to serial adapter. So I'm going to change this to COM11 and 9600 right there. If I went to serial I would see that it's 96, 8 data bits, no parity. And we'll go ahead and open. So we hit enter a couple times and we can see that we've got our AP prompt. And I'm going to resize my window a little bit here. Okay, so I'm going to type enable. And then for this particular AP the default password is Cisco with a capital C. And now I'm going to go to, I've used tab expansion there, so I'm going to use configure terminal, and you can see that my prompt has changed. Now the first thing that I need to do is set up an SSID. SSIDs have a global config, so I'm going to do, oops, dot 11 SSID hardpens. Whenever you configure an SSID, there are going to be two components that you need to do. First up is going to be our authentication, and you'll always use open, at least for base configurations. So remember that authentication open. This is as opposed to shared key or something else. Now when you do WPA, PSK, you'll have some additional items here. But start off with authentication open, and then guest mode. And guest mode puts your SSID in the beacon frame. And that's it. That's all you're going to do, but you are going to do that every single time. So now I'm going to go down to uh, my interface. And remember that I told you guys we have dot .11 radio interfaces. And on these guys we have either, well I'll show you, we have either a 0 or a 1. 
and if we go 5 gigahertz I'll do 1 and then I'm going to apply my SSID the only other thing I need to do is a no shut and that's it now you can see that my radio is changing now I didn't specify a frequency so it's going to go through what we call dynamic frequency selection although I could subvert this by selecting a channel but I'm showing you the minimalist config right now and this is what you want to do every single time so again that means authentication open guest mode go down to the interface apply the SSID and do a no shut and that is it so theoretically if I've done this correctly if I take a look at my uh, my interfaces here well I'm still thinking about it so we'll just give this a second there it is and there's heart fence right there so I could go ahead and connect to this if I wanted to yeah, actually might as well and I'll show you the screen prompts that you'll expect to see so once you connect to your AP what you should see is that you've got an association here and we can see that my station has connected now how do I know that I've done this correctly if I do a show Dot, whoops, dot 11, okay, associations, I will see that I've got my client connected. Now this AP, as you saw from the topology, uh, is not connected to infrastructure, so I don't have a DHCP server. I didn't do a static configuration, but we can see that this base configuration worked, and I'm not actually getting um, an access point based IP address or a DHCP or infrastructure based IP address, and that's it. So, the last thing that I'll show you with this is if you go back and do a show run, what we see here is that, well, I've got a couple of things here, but there's the SSID that I just configured. SSID hard fence, authentication open, and guest mode. If I go down to my interface, okay, I can see that right here, here's dot 11 radio 1 there's my SSID clearly the interface is not shut down otherwise it would say that and then there's my dynamic frequency selection for the channel now that's on by default that's why it went through that selection uh, but that is what you're gonna see every time and that is your base configuration